outside the realm of traditional Christian thinking, challenging the status quo, while embracing the very essence of Jesus. But from another I'm Marshall Jarvis, and once again, I want to welcome you to another perspective. You know we argue a lot in religions, in our religion. How can we argue what we've chosen to believe? We have no facts, and we really don't know. There's nothing to argue. I, I don't argue religion with folks. I might say things at times that, that might be fuel to an argument, but not, not with me. Because there's nothing, there's nothing that you can argue with anyone about what you believe because there are no facts. How can you argue what you've chosen to believe? Okay? I, I had a situation... Uh, about five months ago, I was at a gas station getting gas, and this Jehovah's Witness woman came up to me, and I don't mind talking to anybody. And she wanted to talk to me about, uh, you know, her belief, and, and she began to try to prove to me certain things, uh, you know, from a biblical perspective, certain her particular group's interpretations of things. And, 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 and what I asked her is, well, you know, the foundation is, is this Bible that you have here and, and the way that you've translated what's written in there, but, but, but how do you, why, what is that? And well, this is the Bible, this is the Word of God. And I'm like, well, why, why do you call it the Word of God? Well, well, it is the Word of God. Well, now, I understand you're telling me that this Bible that you're translating, giving me some understanding, is the Word of God, but why do you believe that that is the Word of God? What is your justification for believing that? And, and she finally got all frustrated and, and mad at me. Usually it's other people that get mad at Jehovah's Witness, right? I wasn't mad at her. I'm a minister. You know, I, you know I'm a believer. I believe in God. But, but what I'm saying is, as far as using this to argue with, you can't argue, you know, scripture. You cannot, because anything that you have is, is, is anything that you understand is simply what you've chosen to believe. Usually by the families you came up in, or, or by a particular church that you happened to walk in, or somebody came in your house and you had absolutely no understanding of anything, what they sounded, said sounded as good as anything else, so you've embraced it. But the reality is, how do you know? Why do you believe that the Bible is the Word of God? Now, again, I believe in God, and I embrace Jesus, and I'm a minister, born again. But as far as the Bible being the Word of God, and, and then using this, using our particular interpretations of Scripture to argue with one another, we can't do that. Because there's nothing that you're arguing that you know for a fact. The only thing that you know is, is your connection with God yourself. And, and that is something that you can't prove to anybody. It's just you and God. It's just simply that. It doesn't matter what, what your church believes. It doesn't matter what their church believes. It doesn't matter what any religion believes or any group believes. That it's, it's, it, those are no facts at all. The only facts that you have in this is a fact that you can't prove to anybody. You can embrace it and, and yourself. And that's it. I think the sooner we begin to recognize this, the quicker we'll find ourselves well. Because we spend so much time arguing this point in Scripture, arguing that point in Scripture. Oh, you're going to hell. You're not going to hell. It's Jehovah. It's not God. You've got to be baptized this way. Don't baptize that way. The, you know, all these, all these things that we have are simply the things that we have chosen to believe. There's no fact behind any of them. All the way to the point where you choose to believe the Bible is the Word of God. What, what fact? What, where do you get that from? Who told you that? 
Well, I'm suggesting even when I'm reading the Bible, and this, this is one of my pet peeves, I guess. I, what I'm saying is the Word of God is living and alive and sharp than a two-edged sword that divides the soul and the spirit. The Bible isn't the Word of God that the Bible itself is even speaking to. If anything, the Word of God is, is Jesus. And, 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 and it's not Jesus from the sense that Jesus with, was the Word that was creating the worlds. It was Jesus was a result of the Word, so Jesus is now the manifested Word of God. And then the Jesus is gone. Where is the Word? The Word resides within you, resides within me. The Holy Spirit, the Comforter, that Jesus said the Father would send in His name, that would that would give us comfort, that would teach us all things, that would bring all things to our remembrance, all the things that the Father to ta 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 told us. Okay. So that's the Word. According to what we call the Word, according to the Bible, the Bible doesn't call itself the Word. It can. Because the Bible is simply a compilation of many manuscripts by various people and then translated by many other people over the years, time and time again. So, so there are no facts in that, in, in that what we've proclaimed it to be. The only fact is what resides with you as an individual, your connection with God, and you can't prove that to anybody but yourself. And, and so, I, so what I'm suggesting today is that we spend so much time Believing and, and arguing things that, that, that are not factual, that are not even helpful or healthy for us. Come on, calming the scriptures, calming the scriptures, just to find more ammunition to use in an argument with somebody else. Just recognize that there is a creator, God, Allah, Yahweh, whatever you, Jehovah, whatever you want to call God. And I, and I can't condemn you because you didn't call God what I call God or, or, you know, or, or you don't do what I do in church or you don't worship like I worship or you don't believe what I've chosen to believe. This is an individual thing. It's an individual walk with God. Yourself. And, and I'm telling you, sometimes we've seen and we've seen it on TV, we've seen the greatest of preachers in, in various denominations in their religion. And with hundreds of thousands and even more followers. And, and it turned out they were living a life of hypocrisy before the people. And I'm not even ragging on the minister so much because it's a human being as well. I, I'm just saying you, you can't just say that you embrace a, you know, a certain ideology and belief and, and that's just it and that validates your wellness. Because it doesn't. The only thing that validates your wellness is God, is your relationship, your connection to God. And oftentimes we can see then the manifestations in an individual's life on, on, on how well they are. There's certain ills, certain issues, certain things that we've got to attach ourselves to. And, 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 and I think when it comes to harming folks, when it comes to harming ourselves, but when it, when it comes to the negativity that manifests in our lives, often it's because we, 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 we're not really trying to or attempting to gravitate that close to, to the source, to God, the creator, Ali, Jehovah. And so, so the message today is, is a pretty simple message, is that we just need to get ourselves together. And not just be settled for this is what I have because this is what I've always believed, this is what my mama believes, this is what my preacher believes, whatever. Begin to, to look, you know, insightfully and intelligently at, 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 at things. You are an intelligent person. You have intellect. You have a mind. Look at things critically. And, 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 try, and try to walk the path that you're supposed to walk. Oftentimes we use it, well, you know, sometimes the things that God does or say doesn't make sense. Some things you'll just never know until you get to heaven. That's only when they contradict with what I've been believing. And rather than contradict or challenge my belief system, I'd just rather that say things like, oh, well, sometimes God just doesn't make sense. Or, oh, well, some things you'll never know until we get to heaven. No, it's, I just need to challenge what I've all bought into all of my life simply that. The people that we've embraced even in Scripture. Look at the disciples that, that are credited with some of the books of the Bible. Look at their lives. They lived one way and their lives were challenged and they adjusted their walk. And he, even after becoming believers, Peter, Peter was a guy who denied Jesus, right? I mean, we're always faced, they were always faced, and they're no different than us, faced with challenges that challenged how we walked, what we spoke, how we believed, the way we carried ourselves, and then adjusted. We don't do that today. 
we, we look at Martin Luther and we embrace him so much because he challenged the Catholic Church. Named, you know, the, those contradictions onto that wall. Nailed it, and, 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 and just stood up in the face of, of religious power, of tradition, of, of accepted theology. But, but we're not willing to be the Martin Luther's of today. We need to be. We need to recognize that this is an evolving thing. The more insightful we get, the, the more the light bulb goes off in our minds, the more we're able to understand certain things. Sometimes the things that we have chosen to believe should adjust just a little bit. I mean, how, how long, how long did, did Christians, not even too long ago, believe the earth was only a few thousand years old? Had a hard time believing there were dinosaurs or cavemen. We have to, we have to be pliable. We have to be flexible. We have to be wise enough to recognize that the further back you go in this thing, the less insight and understanding you have. And so it's not always, it's not always feasible. It's not a, even, it's not even sensible sometimes to to sit there and grasp for your reality of truth, the reasons why, from people who, who lived a couple thousand years ago. Too often the issues of life seem to be more difficult to figure out than the issues of our yards, but it's not really that way. All we need are the proper tools and some direction and insight. Join us and listen our urban commentary on Sunday nights at 7.30 and Thursday evenings at 5.30 on Channel 5, and as well another perspective, our spiritual insight program on Sunday mornings at 11.30 and Wednesday evenings at 7.30, Channel 992. As well, you can catch us 24 hours a day, seven days a week on the internet at wellspringsonline.org. I hope to see you there. You should have better insight into the things that they had. They did the best they could with what they had then. And I would think that if, if they were in our time today, some of the things that they spoke then, they would not be embracing sort of like that scientist who was just out in the news recently who, who had been uh, fighting against the whole idea of global warming. There's no such thing, no such thing. Years and years, he was out of it. He was very well known. Just the other day, he came out with a, well, I think I was wrong. <laughs> there is global warming, okay? That's all, that's fine. That's the way we're supposed to be. Believe what you want to believe, and, but investigate. And the more he investigated, the more he investigated, he began to realize he was wrong, and he wasn't too prideful to admit that he was wrong. This is in the world. You know, the scripture tells us to, to look to the children of man because they have more insight, intelligence, and understanding than we do. Well, look at this scientist. He believed what he believed, and, 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 and this was, he was a proponent of that belief. There is no global warming, but he investigated. He was critical. He challenged his own belief until one day he said, hey, I was wrong. There is global warming. That's a blessing to be able to do that. We have a very difficult time doing it. There are things that we embrace that we don't believe. That's why there are things that we are that we hide, things that we do that we lie about. And we condemn others. You know, there's no time for that. I shared the last program about that woman that, that, that I knew that had passed away so quickly. Two hours after I talked to her, she had a massive heart attack and died. And, and the reality of how, how brief life is, how short life is. And, and we spend so much time wasting life. Pursuing things that, that have no real value. And, and not growing. Not being productive, not being a positive influence, but more a thorn in the flesh of others. Even those that are trying to do so. I like to grow plants. And I, and I have these two philodendron plants that I've had for maybe three or four months. And, and it, there were like gnats around these plants. And, and, and I didn't know what to do. At first I thought a couple, it doesn't matter, that's normal, you know, come on. Then there were a lot of gnats. I didn't know what was up. So finally I took these two plants out in the garage. 
Then I got on the internet, you know, looked around there and said that, that you know, a lot of times plants, gnats have attached themselves to these plants. Now, I've had many plants over the years, but I never had a gnat problem. It was something, that's why I couldn't hardly believe it. As I went on to read that article, it said, you know, if there's standing water. <laughs> now, these two philodendron plants, I bought this, these two, this new type pop that I had never used before. It had kind of a scoop or a scoop on the end, and you poured water in there, and it just kept watering these plants like always. And whenever the plant needed it, it would just drink up the water, okay? So I was trying these to these two new pots out on my two philodendron plants. And of course, if water's going to be sitting there for any amount of time, that's standing water. It turned out these gnats were, I guess, laying eggs or whatever they lay in this water. And it was like breeding. I was breeding. I was breeding gnats, you know? In biology, we used to breed those fruit flies so we could see like the genetic changes in the color of their eyes and all that. But I was I was breeding these gnats in my philodendron plants. So I, I, I took them out to the garage and I, I had to take out the uh, I had to pull them out. Uh, they said I could just wash out the pot and fill fill it with new dirt. And I just threw the pots away, man. I just bought two new pots, took out those philodendron plants, broke off the dirt off of the roots, washed off the roots and the whole plant. And then I repotted both of them, and they've been fine ever since. I think it works a little like that. <laughs> we, we got all these manifestations. We call them gnats, all these aggravating manifestations in our lives that, that sometimes others see and we don't see, but some of these we do see, you know. And then we just sort of live with them. You know? this is, they've just been there all this time. These are just some things that I have to deal with, you know. But, but a lot of times it's the environment that they're planted in. The environment that we're planted in, the environment that we were raised in, and, and some of us we've we've come out of those environments. We sort of made it, got an education, maybe, and moved out moved out of those environments. But but still, you know, the roots, the roots, the roots weren't washed off. They weren't clean. They still have those little gnats on them. They still have the issues. We just were transplanted from one environment to another environment. We brought the negative issues that affixed themselves to us in the environment we came up in. So, yeah, we might have moved into a new neighborhood. We brought those issues and ills right there with us. How many say that? You've been in a sort of nice neighborhood. Somebody move in and, but into the nice neighborhood and start affecting things negatively. Now, there's more overt, you know, things that people do that get on your nerves, but there are issues that we have as individuals that came upon us as a result of the environments we were raised and nurtured in, and we may have grown up and moved and transplanted ourselves in another environment, but attached to our roots are still those issues, the roots, the, the mind, the, you know, deep inside the subconscious. And what I'm suggesting today is, it's just we need to realize this and not simply be satisfied with the negative ills and issues of our lives. Now, I know, I think it was in that last program, I suggested that there were going to be things in our lives that, well, you know, we just spend all our time trying to fix. They might never come out. And that's true, too. But there are also many ills and issues in our lives that if we examine properly, they can change. It. And maybe, maybe some of the issues, they just can't be changed, you know, overtly. But, but I'm, and this is what I believe. I'm a firm believer in this. As we begin to, to fix and, and help ourselves in certain ways, certain other issues that we have will begin to, will begin to clear up. Like, for instance, for years, every day, I take vitamins, mega men, multivitamins, and I take some omega, whatever, that fish oil, omega-3 or something, two of those. I try to take some vitamin C. I drink, try to drink milk every day, I eat oatmeal every day, I eat all these fruits, all these things every day, at least five days a week when I'm working. And, and, and you know, I don't know, you know, I eat the turkey and I eat the apples and I eat the carrots and the grapes and the prunes and all that stuff. And orange juice with green magma every day, at least five days a week. Now, I guess what? I, I don't know what that stuff does. <laughs> I don't know. All I know is that they're good for me. And, and so if I eat these things and take these things, it, it should be doing something good in my life. Like the apple fruit. You know how you've heard that little saying, an apple a day keeps the doctor away? Well, guess what? I eat two. Now, I don't know what the apple does, but if an apple a day keeps the doctor away and I eat two a day, that, that should, that should uh, help me out.
not always easy to find this type of inspiration and motivation at any time in our lives. Lives are kind of hectic, a lot of bad news going on, especially when we turn on the television. We just try to peruse the channels looking for something to watch. What I'm letting you know is that 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you can find our programs Listen, Urban Consciousness Revitalization, and another perspective, our spiritual program, on the internet, online, 24-7, at wellspringsonline.org. Hope to see you there. So, so I don't have to know exactly what the result is going to be. There are probably issues in me that, I've had, that I have had for some time that as I begin to eat the right kind of foods, you know, and exercise every day at least five times a week, that these issues that I'm not even aware of, I'm no doctor, I'm no health fitness, you know, instructor, I don't know what it's doing, but all I know if I do what I'm supposed to do, the results are going to be positive. Okay, that's what I'm saying. So, so, all, so what do we have to do? Look, man, we're, we're in a society, we're in a world today that's pretty jacked up. Fi economically, you know, politically, and, and just personally, everybody's hating everybody. All kinds of issues. We might have children that are going crazy and losing their mind, or, or husbands or wives, you know, whatever, losing their minds. Situations outside of our control that we don't have any, anything that we can do, do, do about it. But, but the one thing that you have control over is you. The things that you do for you, what you do for you, how, how you how you take care of yourself, how you think, how your emotional state, your spiritual state, those things that you attach yourself to, positives and negatives, you have control. So I'm suggesting today, we need to be able to begin to take control of the things that we have control over. I mean, I mean, vote, yes, but stop worrying about the political world. Yeah, stop worrying about the sports team. Stop worrying about all this other stuff, the reality programs, the real housewives of this, whether Kim Kardashian and that guy's going to get divorced. You know, all these things that we, we sort of, uh, you know, as, associate our, our time and our, and our thoughts to, we need to put those on the shelf and begin to look at ourselves and ask ourselves, are we really okay? Are we well? Are we healthy? Do we have issues in our lives that we've just acquiesced to? Oh, well, this is just the way it's going to be. And then we're off to watch it and it's somebody else's life, somebody else's reality. It's time to be able to, it's time to, to begin to look at the pot that we're in. See if we've got any gnats flying around. And recognize maybe the environment, first of all, needs to be changed. Or maybe not the environment of the home or the neighborhood we live in, but the environment of our minds. That, that that we have planted ourselves in. Those things that are important to us, that we have immersed our thoughts into. That environment might need to change. Certain programs. I was watching, I used to love to watch uh, Family Guy. You know, that cartoon kind of, you know, R-rated, you know, but so funny. And uh, I was in the basement watching it. This was about a year ago or so. Cracking up. And, and usually if I hear my daughter coming down stage, you know, I'd pause it or turn a channel or to Nick or something, you know. But, but this particular day, I didn't hear her coming down. And she came downstairs and was watching. She watched about a minute of it. And she had this funny look on her face like it's a cartoon. And I turned past it real quick. She goes, what's that, Daddy? <laughs> I said, it's for adults. She goes, but it's a cartoon. And I was like, I can't watch this anymore. And, I, and that's when I told her. I said, you know, honey, I said, this is a cartoon, but it's not really a good cartoon. I said, I, I promise you this. I said, Daddy will never watch this program. Now, you got to understand, that was like one of my favorite little cartoons. <laughs> but I never watched that program again. As I, as I realized, I realized there's something wrong. If I could hide this from my little, this cartoon that I'm watching, there's something wrong. Now, I have other issues in my life, you know, that I haven't put on pause and maybe I haven't stopped. But, but, but things like this, we, we need to, to, to be aware that certain of these things aren't just affecting our lives, but are affecting kids as well. They're watching us even when we don't realize it. And fortunately, I was in a place where, where I, could, I, could, I could talk about this to my daughter. Now, what if, you know how the kids hide from you. What if she had come down that day and snuck down and just hid from me behind the couch, you know, like a little joke. But in the course of 20 minutes, listen to everything that program had to say. And I would have had a lot more explaining to do 
know what I'm saying? So, so let's, let's, some of the things in our lives that are not quite right, we've, we've bought into some stuff, man. And it's like the more you did it, the more you're into it, the, the less of a problem it is until finally you come to the point where you even realize there is a problem with what you're doing. But, but a lot of times you're going to step outside of yourself, look at yourself. And again, if you need to replant your environment, even if it's the environment where the, your mind has been planted, replant that. If you, if you find, you know, there's some issues attached to your roots, try to wash those issues off. And a lot of that, those are health issues. We begin eating right. A lot of, a lot of times, we, our knees are so bad. Why? Because there's a weight issue. You know why? Because there's an eating issue. So, so if there's, why is there an eating issue? Because we have some emotional issues. That the only place we find solace in is when we're eating. We feel at least better while we're eating. So, so we go all the way down to the point where our knees are hurting because we weigh too much, but we weigh too much because we eat too much, but we eat too much because it gives us a good feeling, but we're getting that good feeling simply because of, of memories that are, we're trying to suppress or trying to deal with, trying to feel better about. Man, so, so, so I don't know, maybe go right to the eating part. Find something else to eat. Try to deal with those issues. Maybe there's some issues that you probably processed maybe when you were eight or nine years old that there was no resolution to and those issues became suppressed and it was always a problem to you. But if you can somehow access it and review those issues that you suppressed when you're eight, now that you're 28, you recognize, man, that wasn't really that big a deal. And, and your issue is resolved. But see, you're, you're, you might be finding yourself responding subconsciously to, to issues that happened to you when you were children that were really no issues as an adult, but to that child, it was, a, it was an issue that was not reconcilable, so it was suppressed. But if you can somehow find a way to review that issue now, at the age that you are, you can heal yourself of that ill. Because you say, oh man, that was no ill at all. And then all those things that were attached to that ill will begin to dissipate. You'll find, man, well, I'm not really disappointed because, you know, I understand dad now, I understand mom. Now that I'm, I'm and you're not even consciously thinking this, but the fact you're not disappointed anymore, you're not having that drive to go do something to make you feel better. Then you're finding yourself so you're not really eating too much. You find yourself losing weight, and your knees don't hurt as much anymore. <laughs> I mean, come on. And, and then as you're even losing all this weight and getting yourself in good shape, the children in your life who've been watching you all this time are being amazed at seeing you take these actions to begin to affect your life, and you impress upon them that it's never too late. Man, there's, a, there's a lot that can go down. Let's just not be satisfied with the ills of our lives. Look at your life. Look at the things that are not right. Look at the things that are not correct. Whether it's your health, health, your habits, your whether they're your physical habits or, or financial habits or you know whatever, work habits. <laughs> Address those. Wash, wash the gnats off the roots and then replant them in a clean new environment. And, and of course, God is in the midst of all this. Be praying about. It. Be seeking out. It's not that you got to put your beliefs on someone else or argue the facts or whatever. We got a, we got a full-time job just getting our own lives together. Just deal with it like that. I'm telling you. Man, it's harder to get well when you're arguing about it. It's, it's easier to get well when you're keeping it to yourself. You ever done something like you're getting ready to go on a diet or something or getting ready to stop smoking cigarettes or getting ready to do something that you know you should do that you've been doing all your life and you're doing pretty good at it? One week goes by, two weeks go by. And then you tell somebody what you're doing, and all of a sudden, it's like three days later, you fail. <laughs> Keep it to yourself. Just get yourself together. Let somebody ask you one day, hey, haven't you lost some weight? Or, or what is it about you that's different? I, you know, or something like that. Keep it to yourself between you and God. That's what it's about anyway. It's your personal walk. Person, you know, it's not about my personal, so my Lord Jesus, my personal Savior. Well, it isn't your personal Savior. Then, then keep it to yourself. Get yourself right. In Jesus' name. Well, I do want to thank you once again for joining me for another perspective. I hope you got something out of the problem. Uh, out of, <laughs> I hope you got something out of the program. And I hope to see you next week. But in the meantime, I want to let you know, you should know, that God truly, truly loves you. He really, really does. And so